What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. I'm John the Video Guy and in this Premiere Pro tutorial I'm going to be going over every tool inside the toolbar. So, you know, from the selection tool, all these different tools. So if you're a beginner in Premiere Pro, this is going to be great for you to kind of have a foundation when it comes to using these tools. So let's dive into today's video tutorial and the first tool is the selection tool. So the selection tool is a great tool and it's pretty much the main tool that you'll be using throughout Premiere Pro. So inside Premiere Pro here it is located, it's the first tool here and what the selection tool allows you to do is just easily select clips on the timeline. And you can click on it, you can use it to move clips around. You can also marquee select clips, so by clicking and dragging you can draw boxes around other clips in the timeline and move them around. You can also use the selection tool to select negative space, so for example you can click and select this space, hit delete to like ripple delete stuff. And that is pretty much how to use the selection tool inside Premiere Pro. Alright, so the next tool is called the track forward selection tool and then also with this is this track forward backwards tool, the keyboard shortcut A, key, and then for the backwards tool is shift plus A and what this allows you to do is it allows you to select clips from the cursor position forward. So say if I select and click, I'm basically selecting all the track, all the clips forward ahead of wherever your mouse cursor is in the timeline. And same thing with the backward select tool. If you click this, you're only selecting all the clips backwards. So it allows you using this tool to easily move clips without trying to marquee select everything. And a bonus with this tool is if you hold down shift, you will only select clips on that track. So for example, video track one and two, uh, audio track one are selected where all the other tracks are not. And then by using the selection tool, you can move those. All right, so the next tool is called the ripple edit tool. And what this tool allows you to do is easily trim the beginning and ends of clips and fill in the space before and after. So this saves a few steps in editing. I'll show you how to use that. For example, here, if we zoom in, if you trim this end, you're basically trimming this and then pushing all this, all these clips afterwards forward. So essentially it saves time because otherwise if you just clicked and dragged, you would then have to fill this space in manually. So Ripple Edit automatically does that for you. All right, so the next tool is called the Rolling Edit Tool and the keyboard shortcut for this is N. And what this tool allows you to do is basically change the position of the cut point. So how to use this tool is that say if we have an edit point over here and say if we wanted to shift this edit point to actually cut here instead of over here, what you can do is basically select where this cut is and move it over. And this basically extends this side of the clip more and then trims this side of the clip. So you're basically just moving where that cut point happens. And in the source, in the program monitor, you can see the new beginning and end points of each side of the clip. All right, so the next tool is called the Rate Stretch Tool, and the Rate Stretch Tool allows you to change the speed of a clip by either dragging it forward to uh, make it faster or extend it to make it slower. So for example here, if we wanted to speed up this clip by dragging the end of it, you can drag it to the left to speed it up. And say if you zoom in here, you'll see the new speed here. You can see it's 265 percent speed now so it's a lot faster and conversely if you do if you extend it this way you'll slow it down a lot now keep in mind if you do slow it down and you're not shooting at a high frame rate it will look weird all right so the next tool is called the razor tool and this is a pretty common used tool inside premiere pro it allows you to make cuts on clips and in the timeline so to use it just select it and then you can make cuts wherever you want and you can also hold down shift to make a cut on the whole timeline so you can see the audio clips also got cut there and this is basically your tool to cut as you wish. Alright so the next tool is called the slip tool and what the slip tool allows you to do is easily change where the beginning and end of the clip is without really uh, changing the clip's duration within the timeline. So to use that click on the slip tool and if you click and drag on a clip you can see in the program monitor you're changing the beginning of the clip and the end of the clip. So say if we wanted it to start here, it'll just change the beginning and the end without 
affecting the time actually of the clip in the timeline here or in the sequence. All right, and next is the slide tool and similar to the slip tool, the slide tool does kind of the opposite. It actually changes the position of the clip inside the timeline. So to use that, select the slide tool and when you slide it, you're actually extending, you know, the beginning, the clip before this clip and shortening the clip after the clip or vice versa as you're sliding this clip. So essentially this clip isn't changing at all. You're just sliding it forward or backwards. All right, so next we have the pen tool and the pen tool can be used in a few different ways. The first way is by drawing shapes. So you can make custom shapes by just drawing in the program monitor and to edit this shape, it would be easier to change to the captions and graphics workflow and go to edit and you can see the shape that you drew and make adjustments here. The other way to actually use the pen tool is by actually creating keyframes in the timeline. So with a clip in the timeline, if you can't see this line here, you'll have to extend your video track. So just easily extend this track to make it larger. And by clicking using the pen tool, you can make keyframes. And by default, this is the opacity of the clip. So for example, here it's at 100% and here it's at zero. And you know, using the pen tool, you can make keyframes this way instead of going into the effects controls. And say if you didn't want to change the opacity of a clip, what you can do is right click on the effects button on the clip in the timeline and say if you wanted to change this time remapping like the speed of a clip, you can change it to there and use the pen tool to change the speed. Now, if you want to learn more about how to use the time remapping feature, I did make a video on how to make motion blur where I cover how to do speed ramps in Premiere Pro. I'll link it right up here and also down in the video description if you want to check that video out after this video. So that's how you use the pen tool. And similarly, the rectangle tool, you can create shapes very similarly to the pen tool. You can make custom shapes and you can click and hold down. You can you have an ellipse tool where you can go and make an ellipse. And if you hold down shift while drawing, you'll create a perfect circle. You can also create a polygon. By default, it has three sides, but if you switch to the captions and graphics mode and go to the edit pane, you can change the sides. Say if you wanted a pentagon, you can change it to five here. And essentially, this is where you would go to edit your shapes. All right, so next we have the hand tool. And what the hand tool allows you to do is easily maneuver around in the timeline and the program monitor without really affecting anything, without accidentally adjusting a clip and you just kind of want to just browse over things. So to use the hand tool, what you can do, say if you're zoomed in here and you want to go around the timeline, you can just click and drag using the hand tool. And you know, if you can click and drag over clips and you'll see that you're not actually touching them, you're not actually editing them. So it's a good way to maneuver around the timeline without adjusting anything. You just wanna hover and see what's going on here. Similarly, with the program monitor, say if you're zoomed in here to maybe 200%, you can use the hand tool to drag around to different areas of the program monitor without accidentally, you know, actually shifting where the scale or the position of the actual video clip here. So it's a good way to navigate. And similarly, under the hand tool, there's a zoom tool. So you can zoom in and out of the timeline as well. By holding down option to zoom out, you'll notice that it changes to a minus. And then by default, it's zooming in. And lastly, guys, we have the text tool, and this is pretty self-explanatory. You'll use this tool to create text. There's two different options here with the text tool. You can create normal text or you can create vertical type text. So by clicking here and clicking in the program monitor, we can type out text. And to type vertical text, select that tool and type out your text. And to edit these, you can go to the graphics, captions and graphics panel, use your selection tool to click on these text layers to edit them. So that's it for this video. I hope you found some value in this and kind of learn more about the tools inside Premiere Pro. Now, if you're learning Premiere Pro for the first time and you want to get a little bit faster at the tools and stuff, I did make a video going over the keyboard shortcuts. All the keyboard shortcuts I usually use on a daily basis. I'll link a video link up to that video up here. Feel free to go watch that. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.